Well, hey there, and welcome to another edition of The Teaching Lady. I'm so glad you joined us today. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. I'm glad you stopped by our channel. If you are back today for more information, thank you for coming back. I hope that this series, starting over at 54 Parenting 2.0, is helpful to you and to others. Spread the word. Tell other people about the page. Just trying to get the word out about our experience with our grandnephew who has autism. Well, before we go any further, let me go ahead and open us up in prayer. Father God, I just thank you for who you are, what you've done, and how far you've brought us, Lord, and the things that you have shown us. And Lord, you know me. I have a big mouth. I'm not going to keep it a secret. It's something I want everybody to know. I got to share it. I got to tell them what we've found. And I just thank you for the opportunity, Father. May it glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope your day is going well. You know, many things feel out of control, like gas prices, food prices, the chaos that's going on. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But here's the thing. Don't lose hope. Take each day as it comes. I tell, you know, I tell some friends, listen, let's just take five minutes at a time because that's all I can handle. I, I have to remember, I have to remind myself, the Lord still sits on the throne. And in a world that is screaming around me, I know that the Lord hears my cries. And I pray that you too are seeking the Lord each day. I'm sharing what we're doing, what we're experiencing with our grandnephew Jackson, who was diagnosed with autism in December of 2021. And I journal about that. I want to be able to remember everything that's happening. And I also want to be able to share it with others because I know that reading other people's stories and their experiences has helped me. I, I pick little things out of every story and go, that could help me. I need to research that. What about this? I need to look into that. And so I want to do the same thing for others. Well, back in 2020, just to kind of bring you up to speed, Jackson came to live with us. He's my grandnephew. And little did we know that he would be diagnosed with autism and that he would have gut issues a year and a half later. We didn't see either one of these coming. And now we're taking every possible step to get him the help that he needs. And this experience, I kind of liken it to reading Cliff Notes for a big exam and hope that you remember everything you read. All the while realizing that you really need to read the real textbook because the test is way harder than you ever imagined it, it could be. Now, the last time we were together, I explained that we had Jackson's stool, uh, stool tested at the recommendation of a friend who had her son's stool tested seven years ago. And like her son, the stool testing revealed that Jackson had major yeast belly. But a little bit different with ours is that Jackson also had C. diff and he had three other small bacteria residing in his gut. His immune system was residing in a gut of disrepair and it needed to be corrected immediately. Now, we didn't know by looking at Jackson that his insides were such a mess. He looked healthy. But when I think back now to all the diaper changes that we did, the stool was not normal consistency like it should be. And we realized that those loose stools were pretty much a common thing with him more than they ever should have been. And we missed it. I mean, we rarely saw solid stools. And honestly, it's because he's at daycare five days a week. So we didn't get to see his stools every day. The other reason why I never considered loose stools is because he drank a lot of milk for breakfast. And I've been told that, well, loose stools can be the cause of C. diff and the yeast and not the milk, not the shakes that he was drinking each morning. I start thinking about the various rashes on his arms and his face, all pointing to yeast belly. The signs were there and we missed him. 
I started thinking about when Jackson spent like the first two years of his life at the doctor's before coming to live here because he had rashes, because he had skin issues, and he was given antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic to clear those up. Antibiotics plays a role in C. diff. Eating food, which he's a very picky eater, plays a role in getting yeast belly. Jackson is a very picky eater. No fruits, no vegetables. The only fruit he would eat would be banana. If it was brightly colored of any kind, it was not going to his lips. So where do we go from here? Well, today I want to share the treatment plan that Jackson is currently on. In the event that your child, your granddaughter, grandson, niece, nephew, your own child, children suffer from similar symptoms. I mean, you might be an adult suffering from loose stool and gut irritability, and you could benefit from getting your stool tested. But know this, not all doctors are willing to test stool. Uh, we had to go to an integrative pediatrician to get Jackson's stool tested. And I want to put this disclaimer out there. Okay, the information expressed by this page is meant solely to share our personal experience. The food and medical suggestions should not in any way be construed as child specific advice. Any choice you make to determine your child's treatment or your own is entirely at your discretion. What I'm sharing is what we did for our child, for my grandnephew. So, Let's talk about what is the goal, okay? Number one, we have to kill the yeast. He's got major yeast belly, we gotta kill the yeast. Number two, we gotta kill the C. diff and the other small bacteria. Number three, we gotta build up the good gut bacteria. He doesn't have any good gut bacteria. And number four, we have to get his system regulated. So we're killing the yeast, killing the C. diff and the other small bacteria building up the good bacteria and getting a system regulated. Sounds easy enough, right? <laughs> Not so fast. This can take several months to get Jackson's gut back to a good place, but we have to do this because we need to avoid the bigger internal gut problems that could come down the road. Jackson is not gonna be able to eat tacos, okay? That's just not, in it. So what is the treatment plan for this? First and foremost, no sugar. Get rid of all foods containing sugar, real and fake, as much as possible, and it includes fruit. Fruit has natural sugar, but it's still sugar, and yeast loves sugar. Nom, 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 nom. Give me more, give me more, give me more, okay? I love sugar. Is this going to be an easy thing to do? Not at all, because here's the thing. The sugar beast is real. It's powerful. I know. I have a sugar beast residing in me. It is powerful. I was talking with somebody the other day, and I said, after every meal, I have a major sugar craving. As soon as I'm done eating my food, they go, me too. It happens, right? Veggie pouches in your local grocery store normally have sugar. Many foods naturally have sugar in them or added to them, so be sure to read all the labels. And of course, many of the sugars are, are disguised by all these names that make no sense. Sucralose, I, I can't even say them all. It's ridiculous how many there are. Number two, do not eat anything with yeast. Okay, we're trying to kill the yeast beast, the yeast belly. This is very hard to do considering that so many things have yeast. Number three, you can't have any uh, white potatoes, white bread, white rice. Okay, no white things. Go as gluten-free as much as possible. Stay away from wheat. And we're trying to go as non-GMO as much as possible too. Now, one might hear that list and go, what's left? Can't do sugar, can't do yeast, can't do GMO, okay? Can't do gluten, can't do wheat, okay? What's left? 
Well, there are, there are foods that you can eat, okay? Meat and vegetables, eat as much as possible. Meats are limited to fish, chicken, and turkey. Tuna in the can is not advised because of the mercury content. Remember, we're giving this to a, a child. So we have to think about a child. Jackson needs to eat 50 to 60% vegetables, if possible, each day. This is a child who doesn't eat any. And now we have to get him to eat 50 to 60% vegetables as much as possible every day. Clean and organic vegetables are best. Not all vegetables are an option. So we're gonna go to eating 50 to 60% vegetables a day from practically zero. Whew. And then we had to review the do not eat list of foods, which is long. And we're supposed to steer clear of those foods as much as possible for the first 28 days. Killing the yeast completely can take up to six months, which is when we're gonna have his stool retested to see how we did in getting this accomplished. So. What can Jackson eat? I mean, honestly, the list is not that bad. It's doable. Is it gonna be fun? Has it been fun? No, it is not. <laughs> if you just want an honest answer. It's complicated, right? I mean, it sounds complicated. It's expensive. It sounds expensive, it is. But you gotta get creative. And so far, the biggest challenge for us is finding food options and getting him to eat the new foods. And the more we do it, the easier it's getting. Here's the thing, Jackson goes into fight or flight, okay? He doesn't, he doesn't want anything to do with new, new vegetables, meats that he hasn't really eaten a lot of, okay? He's a very picky eater. So when we first started this, putting anything colorful on the tray, it flew across the room. I had vegetables flying everywhere. He'd just pick them up and toss them. He wasn't even about handing it back to us. It was just pick us up and toss and be mad. Toss his water bottle, just toss foods. We had green beans, carrots, uh, uh, strawberry. Well, we didn't do strawberries, but anything brightly colored flew across the room. So we had our battles at mealtime. Dinner time when we first started this was not fun. It wasn't fun, okay? But we're in this position partly because we didn't push vegetables earlier. We just said, oh, well, if this is all you're gonna eat, okay. And I, you know, in hindsight, I think I should have pushed vegetables early, figured out how to get vegetables in him, and maybe we wouldn't be in this situation because now he has no choice but to eat vegetables. So I would say word of advice, start pushing vegetables early, start trying to figure out how you can get healthy foods into the kid. Because you don't wanna get in the situation where we're at now, where you're having to find ways like now, because he can't eat all that stuff that he was eating. It needs to change now and he needs to be eating this stuff now. We don't have a month, we've gotta jump on it. So, and here's the thing, I, I understand this is a big change for him. But I'm happy to report that he has eaten more veggies in the last two months than he has his entire life. And he's hit us more in the last two months than he has in the past year and a half. But we gotta stay focused on the end goal. The end goal is to get his gut health back to where it should be. Uh, you know, I have to tell you, meat and vegetables in their natural state, unseasoned, I think they're disgusting. I mean, I've sat there and I said, okay, if he's going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to eat this vegetable with nothing on it. It's gross. It's gross. Praise the Lord for whoever created spices. I can have those on my vegetables. And we do the best we can to try and make it palatable for him. But you have limitations. There are limitations to some of those things. Next up is supplements. The doctor suggested seven supplements for a comprehensive treatment plan for Jackson. We were already doing two of those, okay? So all we had to do was implement the remaining five. Sound easy? It's not. 
okay? Because two of them are a powder, and you got to hide the powder. The, but the list of supplements that were prescribed to him, each has a specific purpose in battling this gut bacteria and building up the new bacteria. So many of these you can find at Whole Foods. I even found some on Amazon. Vitamin D drops. Uh, Probiomax probiotic capsule. Uh, we were to continue the current multivitamin that we were already taking. And he doesn't eat gummies. That has never been a thing for him. He won't because of the texture of the gummy. And so we had to do liquid drops, which we have to hide in his drink. We have liquid omega. We have grapefruit seed extract drops. We have L-glutamine powder, and we have MCT coconut oil. And you have to hide all of those things in the drinks. Some of them you can put in the food, and he has to have those every day. Some of them for a minimum of three months. Some of them a minimum of three months, and some just continue. Then there's further instructions. You have to attempt to adhere to the anti-candida, because essentially candida is the sugar or the yeast, for the full 28 days as best you can. The stool analysis will be repeated after six months on the program to get a comparative analysis to ensure that the micro a biome, microbiome bacteria has been rebalanced, the yeast presence has been eradicated, and the pathogenic bacteria has been eradicated and gone, like the C. diff is gone, which I think the C. diff is gone now because his stool is normal looking now. And to ensure that he has adequate hydration, he needs to drink at least half his body weight in ounces of water per day, which for Jackson, he's 36 pounds. This is a lot. It's a lot. But when you consider the alternative, I'd rather tackle the gut issues now, okay, than find ourselves at a hospital years from now and he's got a worse condition. Not to mention all the therapy that we're doing to help with his autism. How much time we've invested in that therapy and because we are now seeing huge results in his talking therapy is going better than it would have had we not done any of this sure jackson would have come along on therapy eventually we hope but because we implemented all these things we're at as of this recording we're two months in jackson's gone from saying less than 20 words to well over 50 to 60 words so as soon as we change the food we start hearing words boom 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 He's no longer self-injuring himself, beating himself like this and biting on himself and, and screaming, which we thought was all part of the autism. While he has autism and he's developmentally delayed, there are things that he's not doing anymore since we changed the food. And there are things that he is doing, which is talking and repeating words that we say which he couldn't do prior. So I'm, a, I'm of the mindset, I have to tell people about this stuff because there, a, there may be a child out there who's going through the same thing and the parent doesn't know. I didn't know. Someone told me. So I know it's a lot, but according to the doctor, the common symptoms of yeast are skin and nail fungal infections, athlete's foot, toenail infections, feeling tired, feeling worn down, suffering from chronic fatigue or even fibromyalgia, digestive issues, bloating, constipation, stomach aches, diarrhea, autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, lupus, psoriasis, scleroderma, multiple sclerosis, difficulty concentrating, poor memory, lack of focus, ADD, ADHD, brain fog, skin issues, eczema, 
psoriasis, hives, rashes, which Jackson had multiple of those, irritability, Jackson had that, mood swings, anxiety, depression, vaginal infections, urinary tract infections, rectal itching, Jackson had rectal itching. That's how my friend looked at him one day, he was scratching his rectum and she said, he has yeast belly. How do you know that? He's scratching his butt. I had no idea. Vaginal itching. Severe seasonal allergies or itchy ears. Jackson would get red earlobes. Strong sugar and refined carbohydrate cravings. Oh, Jackson had those. He was in the kitchen all the time. All the time wanting to eat and we just, oh, he's growing. No, he's growing the yeast belly is what he was doing and we didn't know. We didn't know. So when I look at this list, I see several things that were going on in Jackson. Now that I look at the list and we made our mistake thinking that a toddler can experience some of these things because they're a child, but that ain't the case. Not all pediatricians look at yeast belly either. So I could take my child to a normal pediatrician, his regular pediatrician that he's been going to since he was born. I don't think they would suggest, oh yeah, we need to test him for yeast belly. We need to test his stool. But these toddlers can get these gut issues just like adults can. So now I wonder, one has to ask the question regarding children with autism, how many of these children are experiencing these very same things and the parents don't know? Because they've not been, they've not told about it. They haven't heard about it. It's not something that's common. You know, talking about the gut health related to the brain is not a common topic that gets brought up, but there is a connection. There is a connection. So I believe there's a lot of children. They might be experiencing these gut issues and they don't know how to express themselves. Jackson didn't know how to tell us. And now my gut is killing me. He didn't know how to tell us that. And like Jackson, many children with autism, they can't verbalize. So how would their parents know? I'm not trying to create chaos. And I'm certainly not questioning someone else's parenting. Because Lord knows people could look at me and question what a terrible job I did. But had my friend not pointed out, hey, I think he's got yeast belly. I would have never known. Had I not met them through church, I would have never met them to have met their son, to have watched their journey. And people thought she was crazy. When she was telling people about this, they're like, are you serious? But as she pointed out to me, she said, you know what? You walked with us through this battle with our son seven years ago in preparation for what you are going through today. Your grandnephew has yeast belly. And let us tell you that our son had yeast belly and he wasn't talking much. And when we cleared it up, words were just flying out of his mouth. The difference in two months. We have seen that in our own grandnephew. So next time we're together, we'll dive a little deeper into this. This is a lot of information I know uh, to share with you. It's a lot to digest, no pun intended, but it's something that I feel like people have to know. We've seen the change. We are experiencing the change. And now I'm saying to myself, why do I want to allow him to eat all that bad stuff again? Do I? I don't. I don't want this all to start up again because I... I don't want to have to monitor that. So still got to work that, that part out. Once we get past the six months, we've, we've got a wise to go, a ways to go yet, but we are seeing a huge difference in him already. Huge difference in him already. So let me go ahead and close this out in prayer and uh, I'll chat with you again next time. Father, I just thank you. It was amazing. It's been amazing. And the help that we have received and the guidance that we have received, Lord, thank you so much. And I just pray, Father, that if there's a way for other families to be able to 
get testing done or to look into this, or maybe they just change the foods without getting the testing done. I don't know. But Lord, we need to, we need to be diligent about, about this for our children's sake. Father, forgive me where I have sinned and where I've made mistakes. Lord, thank you for showing me and for teaching me. And it's in your son's precious name I pray. Amen. Will you take care now and I hope to see you back again. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.